Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a physics 7c practice problem on the topic of optics. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps our channel. So this is a problem that we're going to be working on today. A horizontal ray of light refracts into a large wedge-shaped prism and then totally internally reflects off the opposite surface as shown in the picture below. And uh, we are giving the index of refraction of air, and basically we have to figure out what is the index of refraction of this uh, wedge-shaped prism, for part A at least. We'll get to part B in a second. So as you can see, I have a little uh, picture of the prism here. We basically have an incident ray of light over here. It hits. Uh, but we don't really know at which angle it hits. So I'm just going to go ahead and label this, you know, angle number one. It hits. We don't have this angle. I'm going to label it angle number two. And then this ray becomes the incident ray because it's going to hit again, except it doesn't go out of the material. It totally uh, internally reflects. So it doesn't go out. It just bounces off. Now, this uh, drawing over here is it's a zoomed in version of this triangle over here uh, because this triangle involves this angle and this angle. So I just want it to be able to see it bigger. Uh, I drew my axis line over here, the line that's uh, perpendicular to my incident surface, which means that this angle and this angle, which is this angle and this angle are 90 degrees, both of them. And we still have to figure out what this angle is, but we're going to start with this angle because uh, if you remember from DL and as a direct consequence of Snell's law, whenever some, something reflects, the angle of reflection uh, incident and reflect is the same because you're uh, still in the same material, right? So because you haven't left the prism, N1 and N2 is the same, therefore your angles must be the same, which means that because it reflects over here, that this angle has to be 20 degrees because this angle is 20 degrees over here. So this is 20 degrees and I'm going to be working with my zoom inversion, which means that this angle over here is 20 degrees. Oh, and I forgot to write this, but this is information from the problem. The problem gave us this uh, 25 degrees over here. As usual, the PDF version of the quiz, uh, you can find it on the uh, description of this video. So now basically we have to figure out what these two angles are so that we can use our equation uh, because we already have N1. So if we find the angles, we can easily go for N2, which is what we actually have to find. So how do we go about this? Well, let's try finding out uh, this internal angle first, I think, because we already have a big triangle over here, this very big triangle. And this very big triangle includes this angle, right? So what we're going to do is use our knowledge on triangles and remember that the sum of all of the angles on a triangle has to be equal to 180 degrees. So let's see. So 180 degrees has to be equal to all of these angles, including these 90 degrees. You do have to include the 90 degrees. So this is equal to 25 plus 20 plus this angle, which is what I'm looking for. And then also this 90 degrees. Again, you do have to include this 90 because it's the complement of this guy and it's what makes this triangle the big triangle. We're working with the big triangle, not this one over here. So if we go ahead and solve for this angle, that would be 180 minus all of these numbers. So 180 minus 25 minus 20 minus 90, that is equal to 45 degrees. So 45 degrees. 
So this angle is 45 degrees. So now that we figure out uh, this triangle over here, well, this uh, 45 degrees, how do we figure out the incident angle, the angle which I've labeled uh, number one, this one over here. So let's see. I think that we could use this 25 again because when you look at it, this line and this line are completely uh, parallel to each other, these two, which basically means that you could, let me just grab a different color. All right, let's do this one. Draw a perfect rectangle like this, right? So I have a rectangle that goes like this, and this rectangle includes these two triangles. Now these two triangles, because this line is exactly in the middle of my imaginary rectangle, makes it so that I can say that this is 25 degrees, like this. Because again, I am making an imaginary rectangle over here, which makes two triangles. So if this is 25, then this has to be uh, 25 just by using this uh, symmetry and the fact that these two lines, the one with the incident ray and the one with the prism over here are perfectly uh, parallel to each other. So that's the reason why I can uh, very easily claim that this has to be 25 degrees. Now, moving away from this uh, imaginary rectangle that I just made, we can relate this 25 degrees over here to this angle because these two are 90 degrees, which means that if I draw this angle, this angle is 90 degrees, right? So 25 degrees plus the angle that I'm looking for is equal to 90 degrees because they are the complements to each other. These two also have to be 90 degrees, right? Like this. So therefore, this little guy over here is what? So 90 minus 25, um, 90 minus 25, 65 degrees. <clears throat> Let me just write that down over here. So this is equal to 65 degrees. And now we have every angle that we need to uh, finish this quiz. Now, in terms of the uh, trigonometry, there are a ton of ways, I'm sure, to solve this triangle. Whenever you have a trigonometry problem, uh, you know, there's always more than one way for sure. So if you guys went ahead and did something, you know, with this big triangle over here, great. If you did something with this uh, little triangle over here, great. Whatever you did, so long as your answers, you know, make sense, all of your triangles add up. And I'm pretty sure that I have mine right. So, so long as we're, you know, in agreement, then I think, great. There's, there's never just one way to solve a triangle, let me tell you that. So now we just have to use our equation. N1 sine 1 is equal to N2 sine 2. We, we want to find uh, N prism. So this, uh, so N prism. sign and the prism is the one with the angle number two is equal to n air sine one so n prism is equal to n air which is just one sine of uh, the first angle, which is 65, divided by sine of the angle that I labeled as 2, which is 45, 
So N prism is equal to, <coughs> um, let's see, do we have degrees? We have degrees. Sine of 65 divided by sine of 45, that will be equal to 1.28, no units, because this is N, so final answer. So this is a little bit of a trigonomic problem, but once you figure out your angles, then you're good to go. I mean, we only get one equation, Snell's law equation, so that's it. Now, part B is asking, what is the um, critical angle? And this is very easy if you already have your angles and you already have your ends, right? I mean, if you did part A, then there's no reason for you to fail on part B because this equation is literally given on the quiz. So you, we ju we're just going to go ahead and use this equation. You don't even have to be able to deduce it. It's always on the quiz. It's always at hand, so this is more than 1.28. So my angle is sine negative one of uh, one over 1.28. So 51.3, and my calculator is in degrees, so these are the degrees. Final answer. So this is the end of our problem. It was a little bit challenging in terms of the uh, trigonometry, or well, I don't know if it was challenging for you, but whenever a problem has trigonometry, I kind of just go like, oh, really, I don't like this. Uh, if you do, then great. You're gonna do so good on this part of the uh, 7C, so that's fantastic. But to me, you know, I'm not bad at it. I just don't like it. Um, if you, if you enjoyed this content, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment and I will see you guys on the next video.